Hello and welcome to the weekly live stream. My name is Larry and if it's Sunday at 6 p.m. we are uh, starting the weekly live streams talking about all things home improvement and any kind of questions you may have. This week's subject is mold in the house. Have you seen it? Do you think you have it? Do you think it's making you sick? So mold is a very important topic. Um, I think I get asked about it a lot. I definitely see it a lot doing home inspections and other kind of residential work. We see it often, multiple times a week uh, in all various forms, sometimes small, sometimes much more serious. Let's flip through a few pictures and then we'll get right into the material. Okay, so mold will form to some extent anytime you have moisture problems in your house. It's always uh, with uh, water moisture problems in your house. So in this photo, you can see a homeowner trying to kill sanitized mold in a in a ceiling, probably a roof leak or above plumbing. We see it a lot when it's underneath bathrooms. Um, this one is likely during a renovation where where um, you open up a wall or so, and then you have a um a mold and water problem that's a common one especially bathrooms kitchen renovations lower uh, lower bedrooms basements that kind of thing this is either a slab home or a walkout basement home you can see the concrete has dropped off here and it does nothing but hold water every time it rains or snows and then it makes the carpet wet carpet especially carpet with pad then has a prevalence to grow mold it's going to hold water for a long time you if you get water in your lower level you want to dry it out immediately as quick as possible uh, to prevent mold growth this next slide uh, is on some kind of wallpaper, um, very common if it's in a wet location. Generally, wallpaper is not good for any kind of moisture trapping situation, such as a bathroom, kitchen. You don't want it in any areas like that. Where can mold occur? Anywhere in your house with moisture issues. So uh, typically, it's going to be roof leaks, plumbing leaks, or groundwater leaks of some type. So uh, roof flashing issues. Uh, bathroom, plumbing issues, and or basement walkout lower level issues. That's the most common situations here. So again, roof leaks, bathroom condensation leaks, window door drafts. Oh, I didn't talk about doors and windows yet, but we will shortly. Uh, and then of course, basements, walkout, crawl space situations in the lower level. That's a huge one. Uh, this one probably again found during a bathroom or kitchen remodel, maybe a bathroom and any area that is high moisture content that can trap the moisture behind another building material such as tile, wallpaper, um, yeah, vinyl flooring, uh, behind your toilet, seeing it a lot. Window issues. This is uh, kind of a common building trend right now. Um, you know, we don't have always great quality construction, so they're pulling away a lot of mold, wood, solid wood moldings and trims away from doors and windows, and they just finish it off with cheap drywall. On the inside, it's certainly a way to save some money. But then you have drywall, which is drywall is the absolute probable number one uh, feeder grower uh, of mold. Uh, drywall, it's such a perfect environment. Drywall is coated with paper on both sides, paper. So um, any kind of moisture issue, uh, drywall just grows mold immediately. So this is around a uh, window or door, probably condensates. Uh, when you have, have, or have two temperature differences, you'll have a condensation issue uh, to some extent, and then that condensation is enough water to grow mold over time. Uh, where to see it? Yeah, up in your ceilings. Uh, under roof flashings is a number one area, especially also if it's plumbing uh, and you have bathrooms up above, you'll see it in your ceilings a lot. This one's probably a roof leak here uh, that was not taken care of. Uh, lower levels, um, corners seem to be worse. So if you're in a lower level situation, below grade, uh, half, half basement, full basement, daylight window basement, if it's any uh, garden level, if it's anything below grade and it's in the corners, it's going to be groundwater, it's going to be roof runoff, such as the gutters run down the side of the house, and it's not draining or channeling the water far enough away. Uh, when it's in the corners, it seems to be a roof gutter issue. This one, <clears throat> usually they're not that obvious when you first walk into a home, otherwise a buyer would run screaming um, or a tenant would run screaming. Um, this one was probably a flooding situation of some type and then abandoned for quite some time. Here you see a professional treating mold. Um, <clears throat> before we get into the material, that one always interests me. So depending on the surface you have, in this case, 
I almost say, why treat it? It looks to be on wallboard, dry, drywall of some type. Well, why treat it? The odds that you could salvage that is very low. It needs to be just cut off and removed. You're just going to dispose of that section of the wall altogether. Then you're probably going to treat the framing and the studs of the wall cavity, the parts you're not replacing, and then you start to rebuild the wall with new drywall and such. Uh, black, dark mold, we'll talk in, in a minute, we'll get into the color issues and the misconceptions of the colors of mold. There's so many misconceptions with mold um, in general. Um, all right, let's drop that one. Okay, so mold is uh, everywhere in your house. That's That's number one. Let's talk about that. So mold is everywhere. Right now I'm breathing it, you're breathing it. Um, it is everywhere. It occurs in nature. Um, it doesn't mean you have a water problem. If you have a professional do an air quality test in your house, it will come back with a report of mold. Mold is everywhere. Like I said, we're breathing it right now. Doesn't mean it'll make you sick. You can be in a house with visible mold and not getting sick at all, depending on a lot of factors. What's the concentration and how much mold spores? What type of mold? Are you particularly susceptible to that? I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm very sensitive to molds, uh, spores, uh, allergens, that kind of thing. Have you been told that? Have you had an allergy test or, or are you just thinking that, that you are put off by the smell of like a musty area? Um, but yes, molds are everywhere. You can see it sometimes if it's growing on the surface, but if it's already growing on the surface, it might be behind the wall or in some other unseen area. Sometimes you can smell it, especially in basement, lower level situations. You'll walk down there and you smell a musty smell for sure. If you smell a musty smell, likely there is mold somewhere, I would say for sure. Um, people in a finished basement, lower level situation will run a dehumidifier. That's just a way, in my opinion, to like maintain a drier environment, but you still probably have some other corrective measures to take place first, uh, such as uh, sealing the foundation cracks, making sure there's vapor barriers, installing uh, roof eave gutters to drain the water farther away, maybe resloping the grating away from the house. Um, mold problems in your home will always be related to water problems. So if you take care of the water problems, the mold problem should take care of itself um, after you get it corrected and cleaned up. Colors of mold. Uh, let's pop this one on. So it's a misconception that the color means much. Um, people will say black mold. Oh, you have black mold. I think you have black mold. Now, I think generically that term black mold has just come to mean a severe case. Uh, you know, it's a black, bad case if it's black mold. Well, I don't know if I have a slide of that, but mold, this one kind of shows that mold comes in every color of the rainbow. I've even seen pinks and purples and other hues than, than shown here on the screen. Uh, mold comes in all colors. It does not mean it's more serious just based on the color. You and I can't tell by looking at it. It would have to actually be laboratory tested to tell you for sure which, which type of mold you have. Um, but yeah, black mold, I think the first time I heard the term, I was quite young, but the first time I think I heard the term in the newspaper article, that's how old I am, in the newspaper article, it had said, uh, stachybotrys. So stachybotrys, uh, let me see if I got the spelling of that one on here. It's a common one that you'll hear as a serious concern, stachybotrys, because it is one of the more serious, dangerous ones, um, even in lower concentrations. Uh, it can make you extremely sick depending on your health issues. Uh, it can actually kill an infant, for instance, if it was very high levels of this type of mold. So that one is very, very serious, but you can't tell the severity of mold just by the color. You would need testing. Um, there are some do-it-yourself tests at the big box stores, Home Depot and the such. Likely though, if you're serious about this, you do want to have it professionally tested. So you're going to call a mold um, water extraction company contractor. They're going to come in, they're going to do a mold test. Now they can do a swab test, which is taking a sample of the exact area, the surface um, of the mold and tell you exactly what it is. Probably more important is the air test. They have these little Petri, petri dishes. I know that's a dated term, but that's what they are. That um, And then a blower will run for a period of time and um, the air will hit that dish, they'll seal it off and they'll send it to the lab. And you'll get an exact laboratory test 
of what are the concentrations of mold in your house and which type of mold on the screen, which type of mold do you have. So some are more serious than others. And, and a good lab test should tell you the normal range. You will see lots of mold and you will be alarmed perhaps. Like I said, I'm breathing it right now. You're breathing it right now. It's everywhere. But um, it'll tell you the exact amount you have, the severity, the normal range. So if you're high, uh, then that's that's when to take action if you're above the recommended level of a certain mold. Now, if you've been told you're particularly sensitive to mold, um, you've had allergen tests uh, and doctors tell you, then, then you uh, may need more sanitary, more cleanup than the average home that's possible. Now, um, mold testing is not cheap. It's hundreds of dollars and up. I've seen it more than that. I've seen $1,200 just for a mold test. So uh, depending on how many samples they take, where they take it from, that kind of thing. So it's not cheap, but if your health is at stake, it's worth doing. And if you have any inkling that the contractor is showing you an incorrect report, such as a good mold lab report should have a chain of custody from who took the sample, what lab they took it to, that kind of thing, the exact date, chain of custody, and what lab it was taken to, um, where the sample was taken in the home, the location. It should have this very uh, important crucial information to make sure it is a report from your house and not somebody else's house. What if the contractor showed you a bad report and they're trying to sell you thousands of dollars in mold cleanup uh, sanitation methods and it's not even your house? So. Um, make sure you see a very professional lab report with every detail item on there. And if you doubted it, you could actually just get a second test and compare the two. Um, professional cleanup and removal. So if the mold is on a soft surface, and by that I mean like carpet, pad, drywall, plaster, anything where it's like porous, invading, growing, changing. That's where I would cut out the material, throw it away and not think about cleaning it. I would just, like in the picture there, drywall surface beyond hope. You're going to have to lose all that material and throw it away and just get rid of it. Um, if it's on, for instance, a uh, foundation, like a concrete foundation or surface or uh, granite or solid surface material on your kitchen counter, you know, certain materials you can clean and sanitize the surface and you're going to be fine. Other materials don't even risk it like drywall, just throw it away and be done with it for sure. Um, so yeah, mold on hard surfaces, easier to clean and sanitize. Mold on soft surfaces can be cleaned and uh, taken care of, such as also another example of surface cleaning is attics. A lot of times we'll find mold in attics. Uh, on the roof decking, the trusses, the rafters, that kind of thing. And all the framing and hard surfaces actually get treated with a chemical that kills the spores. Um, sometimes they'll do mechanical scrubbing. And then the insulation, if it's a large job, will actually get physically replaced. The insulation in the attic will get replaced. Areas of mold to be found. So let me pop over to this other slide here. Oops, bear with me. Okay, so this one, areas of mold that are found is very common. This is from the CDC Centers of Disease Report. It, uh, how common is mold in buildings? Basic facts about mold and dampness. Molds are very common in building and homes. Molds will grow in places with a lot of moisture. We already talked about that. Bathrooms and kitchens, lower levels, such as around roofs, windows, pipes, or where has been flooded recently. Mold grows well on paper products, cardboard, ceiling tiles. Oh, we didn't talk about the cardboard yet. And wood pr products. Mold can grow in dust, paints, wallpaper, insulation, drywall carpet, fabric, upholstery. Uh, the cardboard issue that caught my attention is so many times homeowners will have stored boxes, cardboards in their basement and crawl spaces, and we get down there and the entire box has mold growing from the bottom up. Um, very, very common. And then if left untreated, it seems kind of innocent. You're like, okay, so we got an old box of my crappy clothes and my uh, Christmas items. Uh, what do I care? It's a cardboard box. It's a cheap cardboard box. Well, as the mold grows, it actually, it's a living organism. It actually grows. Then it can off gas. Spores can be released 
they can transport to other places in the home. They can get in the heating cooling system and ducts and they can be transported and you start having mold, mold problems in other areas of the home. So you don't want to dismiss it and say, well, it's just a stupid cardboard box. You do want to stop it and correct it whenever you find it. So yeah, areas of mold growth. Basements below grade for sure. Uh, groundwater, rainwater, huge, huge problem. Um, crawl spaces under the house, huge, huge problem. Uh, lower areas around doors and windows, large areas there, heating and cooling AC ducts. So you're heating it. If you don't have a boiler system, if you have a forced air furnace and central cooling system, that's a lot of air movement that you're breathing every single day. And if you have mold spores in the HVAC air ducts and or the furnace and the filter, it's just blasting and blowing everywhere every time the system kicks on. So you likely will need the ducts profession clean too after a large mold abatement and, and treatment. Um, bathrooms, kitchens, that goes without saying. I guess for plumbing and for daily use, bathrooms and kitchens are your number one source for, for growing mold just because they're wet and moist all the time, especially bathrooms, and they're not even given a chance to, to dry out. Um, a bathroom is moist a lot of the time, so it's not given a chance to dry out. So things are growing and, and uh, mold is growing. If you think you have health problems, lung problems, breathing problems related to mold, related to your house, get it tested and then definitely talk to uh, your doctor for sure. Why not bring in the health professional? And they can also give you additional resources and ideas to pursue. Uh, generally speaking, though, if you fix the water problem, you will fix the mold problem. Let me drop that one. So yeah, if you fix the water problem, it will fix the mold problem. So to me, that gives me a little bit of comfort that this isn't just a mysterious, weird, alien like substance that's growing in my house, making me and my loved ones sick. It is controllable because you can control the moisture. If you stop the moisture problems in your home, you will stop feeding the mold. Um, now in your bathrooms and kitchens, they do make uh, mold resistant. Well, if it's a complete renovation, you're replacing walls, they do make mold resistant drywall. That's a product. Um, it's not that much more expensive than regular drywall. Why not? They do make mold resistant paint for sure. Use, use that in your kitchens and bathrooms. That should help a lot in your basements. Uh, basements are a huge, huge area um, where we have mold. Now, depending on where you're watching me, not everybody has a basement. I understand that it's more of a north northern issue. We have basements. Down south, you don't have basements, uh, mostly concrete slabs down south. But where we have bas basements, uh, water and mold issues are huge. Um, they're, they're damp from time to time. Sometimes we have finished basements, then the problem is larger because the mold, we're feeding the mold and it's going into the carpets and the walls and the lower baseboards. Um, a lot of times if a uh, homeowner or a home buyer, potential home buyer will ask me, do you think there's mold here in the, in the basement? We can actually pull up a little corner of that carpet. Um, the corner seems to be a good spot. Just pull it off that tack strip a little bit. And then if it has a wooden tack strip, check the wood. You'll see water stains. Uh, sometimes the wood is even rotted uh, because it has so much moisture damage on it. And we can say safely that, yeah, your basement has been wet from time to time for sure. Uh, if it looks completely dry and there's no staining on the on the wood tack strip, then I feel good about that, saying that it's probably dry. Uh, and running a dehumidifier, if you have a full finished basement, is probably needed to some extent, at least in the summer months. Um, in the winter months, if you have forced heating, in the northern areas with your basement, the furnace kicking on often, say every 20 minutes in the wintertime, as it's kicking on, it's like a giant hair dryer in your house. So all that warm moving air is drying things out. So it is helping you in the winter season. Um, but yeah, fix the water problem and it will fix the mold problem. So yeah, these pictures are pretty dramatic. You, likely you're not having this kind of extent in your house unless you're doing a renovation project or recently had a plumbing leak or some other issue. Um, so ho hopefully you're not that severe at all. All right. Um, yeah, that one I do think was a roof leak. 
This one was a lower level water problem, I believe. This one, I think, was a flooding issue. And there was probably a vacant home and left abandoned for quite a period of time. So that mold just festers and then it actually starts to get worse and worse at an accelerating rate. Treating mold, if it's on soft surfaces such as drywall, um, flooring, just rip it out, throw it away and start again from scratch. Black mold, uh, mold can be any color, literally any color. Uh, so don't judge its severity just on the, just on the uh, color. You would need it tested. But in most cases, I wouldn't pay for, if you had a one-time occurrence of a flood or if you had um, a wet basement or, or immediate situation where you knew exactly where the water came from, you know, you had a perfectly healthy, clean house and now you have a mold house. Uh, if you know exactly where the water penetration or problem came from, I would take care of that issue and not necessarily pay for expensive testing, at least not a, initially, uh, and just rehab that affected area. Um, when I see sometimes home buyers, homeowners pay for expensive testing on a certain known trouble spot, they could have just had that trouble spot renovated. Uh, for, you know, just jump right to the next step. You're going to end up spending anyways, just jump right to the renovation. Um, but if you don't see mold and you still think your house is making you sick, uh, then you're going to have to jump to testing, air testing of some type and stop that water from coming in your house. Remember, there are many, many different uh, families and classifications of mold. They all have very long scientific names. They all do different things to the body and to the lungs. Some are more serious than others. Um, some are just commonly found in all homes. Some are non-toxic, some are toxic. All right, guys, thank you. That is this Sunday home improvement chat conversation. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments down below, and I will respond usually within about 24 hours. We will see you next week. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful time.